I'm going to show you how to make Sebastian the Scarecrow from Creative Kiwi. For this I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, two layers of wash away stabiliser per hooping, and there are five hoopings, a selection of threads, some masking tape, my squizzers, some pins with heads on them, my fabric and batting cut to size, some wool and some Solvi topper which is the transparent thin wash away stabiliser. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below. We're going to start off by hooping two layers of wash away stabiliser and then we're going to pin around the top edge of the hoop and this is going to stop our stabiliser from being pulled down between the ho two hoop pieces while uh, our scarecrow is stitching so take your pin place it on top of the inside hoop push it through your stabiliser bring it round and back through the stabiliser again and that will anchor it and you're going to do that on all four sides the larger your hoop the more pins you will use Load file number one into your machine, that's the stake end and two arms. Along with your thread colour for the stake, I'm using dark brown. And then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outline for the stake. We're now going to add our backing and I just want to add a little thing in. If you want to add a backing but not fabric behind your scarecrow you can add a scrap of um, no-show mesh or cutaway stabilizer underneath your batting and then you will treat it the same as the batting so when you trim that away you will trim the no-show mesh and it will mean that once your wash away stabilizer is removed you will still have um, uh, some sort of backing on the back of your scarecrow. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so place your batting down uh, um, over the outline and then tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away your excess batting and if like me you've added um, mesh or uh, cutaway underneath, trim that back at the same time. We're now going to place our fabric for the stake over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. We're now going to trim up the excess um, fabric from around the edge of the stitch line. Take care of course not to cut your stitches. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four and that's going to zigzag the edge and it's going to complete the detail on the stake. We now come to the first arm and the first uh, thing we're going to do is our placement outline for our batting. I'm staying with my brown thread for this and we're now going to stitch round number five. We're going to place our batting over this area here and this is the actual end of the stake um, at the end of his arms. So place your batting over the end and I'm going to place my um, mesh underneath and then we're going to oops, tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six and that's going to secure it trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line taking care not to cut the stitches of course Place your stake fabric over the outline and tape it in place. 
Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 7 to secure it. Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitches. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 8 and that's going to do the satin stitch border around the edge of the stake. We're now going to place our wool over this stitch line here. I'm just turning this round a little bit. And you want it to sit between the uh, satin, sti sat <laughs> satin stitching of the stake and then tape it in place then we're going to place our batting over the top and I'm just putting a bit of mesh over there as well you don't have to do that and then we're going to tape that in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number nine and that's going to secure your batting and the wool in place as well You're now going to trim around the edge of your to remove your batting, uh, taking care of course not to cut your wool underneath. And I'm going to start there just so that it doesn't get forgotten. Place your sleeve fabric over the top and tape it in place. load your thread colour for the checkering on the sleeve into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 10 and that's going to secure your fabric in place making sure that you've got your thread colour for the checkering on his shirt loaded into your machine you're now going to stitch round number 11 if you've got a fussy fabric with lots of pattern on it you can actually skip this colour if you wanted to I'm going to stitch it we're now going to trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line take care not to cut your stitches or your wool underneath of course Pop your hoop into your machine along with your thread colour for the satin stitch border around the um, sleeve and the cuff and then stitch round number 12. I'm going with red for this. So that's our first sleeve stitched. I'm just going to trim off some of this um, wool but I'm going to leave my tape on there like that just so that the end of his stake is showing past the straw okay so we're now going to do the second sleeve in exactly the same way load your thread colour for the stake into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 13 and that's going to give you a place an outline for your batting and your fabrics place your batting over the end area of the stake and I've got my piece of mesh underneath as well and then tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 14 and that's going to secure it trim around the edge of the stitch line taking care not to cut your stitches Place your stake fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 15 to secure it. Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care of course not to cut your stitches. You're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 16 and that's going to do the satin stitch border 
around the edge of the stake. We're now going to add our wool and batting and we want to keep it between um, the satin stitching of the stake here and take it in place. Place your batting over the sleeve area and I've got my mesh underneath and take it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care of course not to cut your wool or the stitches. Place your sleeve fabric over the outline and tape it in place. You're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 18 and that's going to secure it in place. Load your thread colour for the checkering over the sleeve and cuff into your machine and then stitch round number 19. Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the sleeve, taking care not to cut your stitching or your wool of course. I'm going to show you a little um, tip. If you're worried about your foot getting caught in the wool, Take a piece of sol wash away um, solvy topper, place it over the wool and take it in place. Now when your foot travels around it's not going to catch in anything and after we've finished we're just going to tear it off. So load your thread colour for the satin stitching of the sleeve into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 20. So we can now remove the solvy topping and our tape holding the wool in place and I'm just going to trim this end quickly. And we can now remove all our pieces from the hoop. So turn your hoop over and again taking care not to cut anything off that shouldn't be cut off. Trim around the edge of your stitch line and free your pieces from the hoop. So now that our pieces are free we're going to trim up where the raw edges are because that's where we're going to join um, these pieces onto later. And take care of course not to cut your stitches but cut as close as you can. And the same on the end of the sleeves here. And that's our stake and sleeves complete and we can set them aside for the minute. We now come to the second hooping. So load file 2 into your machine and that's for 
your scarecrow's trousers. Hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabilizer as you did for the previous hooping. Load your thread color for his trousers into your machine. And then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you a placement outline for your wool and for your batting. The first thing that we're going to do is attach our wool to the bottom of the trousers. I'm going to turn this around so that you can see what I'm doing. So take your wool, place it over the bottom stitch line. I've probably got a little bit too much there so I'm just going to cut a little bit off of here. And we want it so that it falls within the narrowest part of the trouser leg. And then I'm going to tape it in place. And then we're going to do the same with the other leg. I think I've still got too much on here. I'm just going to adjust that. That's better. <laughs> okay, so as before, I'm going to place my no show mesh down first with my batting over the top. We're going to tape that in place. Pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure everything. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care of course not to cut any of your wool off of it. You're now going to place your fabric for his trousers over the outline and I'm using recycled denim here and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three and that's going to secure your fabric and it's also going to give you your placement outlines for his patches on the trousers. I've used a, a, an orange thread to stitch the fabric down for my trousers so that you can see it but you can of course use a more discreet colour. <laughs> okay so we're now going to place our fabric over the right patch of his trousers and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four. Make sure that you've got an appropriate colour loaded into your uh, machine for this. Trim around the edge of the patch, taking care of course not to cut your stitches. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five and that's going to do the satin stitching around the edge and the hand stitching detail as well. We're now going to do the same with the other knee. So place your fabric over the outline and secure it in place. Load an appropriate thread colour into your machine and then stitch round number six and that's going to secure it in place. 
trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line of the patch. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven. And that's going to do the satin stitching and the hand stitch detail over the patch. Place your fabric for his pockets over the outline and tape it in place. Load an appropriate thread colour into your machine, then stitch round number eight to secure it. Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the pockets. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number nine and that's going to do the satin stitching on the edge of his pockets. We're now going to trim our um, trouser fabric around the edge of the stitch line, taking care of course not to cut your wool. I've moved my tape back because it was right hard up against the edge and I don't want it interfering with the stitching. If you are worried about your foot getting caught in the wool, place a bit of Solvi topper over the top of your work and tape it in place. Now when your foot travels around it's going to glide over the top of the solvi and it's going to prevent it from getting into mischief. Load an appropriate thread colour for the satin stitch border around the trousers into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 10 and that's going to zigzag at the edges. We're now going to join our stake that we stitched in the first hooping here. Okay, so we're going to place the point of the stake, the stitch line here, on top of this stitch line here, where the zigzagging stops. And we're going to tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 11 and that's going to zigzag up here and join the two pieces together. I've removed the tape that was holding this down and I'm just going to move it down a little bit just to hold the bottom of the stake flat to the hoop because we're now going to stitch round number 12 and that's going to do the satin stitching around the edge of the trousers. There won't be any along here because that's going to be the join to his body. Now that that's all stitched I'm going to remove the solvey topper from over the top of my stitching. And it just tears off. And we can now free this from the hoop. Take care when you're trimming around the edge that you don't cut off all your wool. I'm going to start there. And the other thing that you have to be careful of as well is your um, stake. fingers and thumbs today. <laughs> I 
I'm now going to trim up along here because that's going to be a join later on so take your time take care not to cut the stitches but just neaten up that edge and I'm going to trim down these a little bit just so that they're not so long and that's our trousers complete and we can set this segment aside for the minute we now come to the third hooping which is his head so load file 3 into your machine along with a neutral thread colour uh, for stitching down the head fabric with I've I'm using orange so that you can see what I'm doing. Normally I would use um, a thread that actually matches my um, fabric, but um, just so that you can see what I'm doing. So then you're going to hoop and pin your two layers of wash waste stabilizer. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one. And that's going to give us our placement outline for his hair and for our batting. So we're now going to place the straw hair in place and you want to align them between these two markers and take them in place. Oops. Then I'm going to place my no-show mesh over the top along with my batting and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it we're now going to trim away the excess batting taking care of course not to cut the stitches or our wool we're now going to place our fabric for the face over the outline and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it and that's also going to give you the placement outline for his nose as well place your fabric for his nose over the outline and tape it in place Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure it. Trim around the edge of the stitch line to remove the excess fabric. Making sure that you've got a suitable colour loaded into your machine for the nose. You're now going to stitch round number five and that's going to do the satin stitching and the hand stitch detail. Load your thread colour for your scarecrow's mouth into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number six. I'm using a very dark grey. Load a white thread into your machine for the white of the eyes and then you're going to stitch round number seven. Load a black thread into your machine for the black of the eyes and then you're going to stitch round number eight. Load your thread colour for the eye colour into your machine. I'm going with a rich brown. And then you're going to stitch round number nine. Trim 
Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care of course not to cut any of your wool. Load your thread colour for the satin stitching around his face into your machine and then stitch round number 10. Before I go any further I'm going to place some Solvi topper over um, the um, wool just so that it keeps it out of the way while I'm stitching the satin stitch border. Now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 10. So that's the stitching finished. Before I free this from the hoop, I'm just going to remove the solvy topper. And we can now turn this over and free it from the hoop, taking care of course not to cut your um, hair off. And we're now just going to trim around the raw edge ready for our join in the next hooping. And that's our face complete and we can now set it aside for the minute. We now come to the fourth hooping which is your scarecrow's hat. So hoop and pin your two layers of wash waste stabilizer as you did before. Load file four into your machine along with a neutral thread for the hat and then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you a placing outline for your batting and the placement lines for the hair so we're going to place a few wisps of hair between these two markers and tape it in place we're also going to place our face I'm going to turn this around a little bit so I can see what I'm doing you're going to place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here and then secure it in place now I'm going to use a pin or two make sure that you keep your pins right out of the way of the stitch line though these are going to be hard up against the edge of my hoop Before we go on, I'm just going to put a little bit of Solvi topper over here just to make sure that nothing gets caught in the hair. That's better. I'm happy now. Okay, so we're now going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Okay. I'm going to trim back the solvi just here because we're going to be putting our hair on next but I want to keep it on the edges I'm just going to turn this around a minute while we lay the hair down now I've stuck mine onto sellotape so I'm just going to make sure that all this hair is between here and here and I think I'm going to trim that back a little bit just so that there's not too much bulk 
but I want to make sure that I don't trim it back too far so that um, it doesn't catch underneath the batting. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. We're now going to place our batting over the top. I've got my layer of mesh as well. And tape it in place. We're now going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number three. And that's going to secure the batting and the hair in place. We're now going to trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care of course not to um, cut any of our hair or stitches. We're now going to place our stake fabric over the outline. Turn that round just so that you can see which way round I've got everything. And tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure it. We're now going to trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stake. Uh, before I lay my um, hat fabric down, I'm just going to put a piece of Solvi Topper over um, here so that when I trim up the hair, it's not going to get caught up. And it doesn't matter about leaving it inside because once this is washed, it's all going to disappear. The same as the uh, um, wash away stabiliser here because it just washes out. So we're now going to place our fabric for the hat over the outline and secure it in place. load your thread colour for the hat into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number five and that's going to secure your fabric in place. Place your fabric for the hat band over the outline and secure it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six to secure it. We're now going to trim up all the excess fabric. We're going to leave the solvi in place for now and you need to make sure that you don't trim off any of your hair that's tucked under here as well. We're now going to stitch round number seven and that's going to zigzag all the raw edges on the hat and also around um, the stake. I've just changed my thread colour to yellow to match my hat because I was using an orange so that you could see what I was doing. So we're now going to stitch round number seven.
load your thread color for the sides of the face into your machine and then stitch round number eight load your thread color for the satin stitching around the edge of the stake into your machine and then stitch round number nine load your thread for the top half of the hat into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 10 and that's going to do the satin stitching load your thread color for the satin stitch around the hat band into your machine and then stitch round number 11 load your thread color for the satin stitch around the hat brim into your machine and then stitch round number 12 I'm just going to remove the solvy And then we can give him a little bit of a haircut. And we can now free this from the hoop. So turn your hoop over, trim around the edge, taking care of course not to cut any of your hair or the stitches. And that's our head and hat complete. We can now set this aside for the minute. We now come to the fifth and final hooping. So load file five into your machine along with your thread color for the checkering on the shirt. Then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting. Place your batting over the outline and I've got my mesh as well that I'm going to place over the top. And tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure it and give you your placement outlines for your fabrics. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line. Place your fabric for the shirt over these three areas here and tape them in place. 
Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. Making sure that you've got your thread colour for the checkering of his shirt loaded into your machine. You're now going to stitch round number four. You can of course uh, skip this colour if you wanted to. You're now going to trim away the excess fabric from around uh, the edge of the stitch line here where the dungarees are going to be. Place your fabric for his dungarees over this area here. And tape it in place. Load your thread colour for his dungarees into your machine. And then stitch round number five. Load your thread colour for the pocket on the bib of the dungarees into your machine and then stitch round number six. You're now going to place your fabric for the pocket so you want it folded in half. Align the top fold with each side of the stitching. and then tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven to secure it. Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line of the pocket, taking care of course not to cut your stitches. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number eight and that's going to do the satin stitching around the edge of the pocket. Load your thread colour for the buttons of his dungarees into your machine and then stitch round number nine. You're now going to trim away the um, excess fabric from the bottom here place your fabric for his belt over this area here and secure it in place load your thread colour for the belt into your machine and then stitch round number 10 to secure it We're now going to stitch round number 11 and that's going to do the quilt details on his belt. We're now going to trim up all the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch lines, taking care of course not to cut our stitches. Load a neutral thread colour for the dungarees and belt into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 12 and that's going to zigzag the raw edges of the dungarees and along the belt here and at the side of the belt and it's going to stop where we come to join his uh, legs to his torso. You're now going to position your legs and you're going to place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here and secure it in place. You can either use tape or pins. If you use pins like I do then make sure that you keep them right out of the way of the stitch line. And 
I'm going to put a little bit of tape here and here just to keep those edges down during stitching. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 13 and that's going to secure the two segments together. Check your join, make sure that you're happy with it. If you're not, unpick the zigzag stitching, reposition your legs, secure them and then stitch round uh, number 13 again. If you're happy with it, you're now going to stitch round number 14 and that's going to zigzag up his side and it's going to stop where we join uh, the arm to his body. We're now going to attach his right arm and to tell the difference between the two you've got a long straight edge here which I believe in knitting terms would be called the raglan sleeve and a shorter piece at the top. The long piece is going to go like so. So you want the long pieces on each side of his body eventually. So position this arm, the, the, his, um, our left, his right arm, so that the stitch line here is sitting on top of the stitch line here and secure it in place. And again, if you're using pins, keep them right out of the way of the stitch line. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape here and here. The reason why I use both, the pin secures it and the tape stops it from twisting. You're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 15 and that's going to zigzag up here and join the arm to his body. So we're now going to um, attach his head and you want to place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here taking care to align them carefully and then secure it in place again with the pins keep them right out of, the, out of the way of the stitch line I can't say that enough and I'm going to put a little bit of tape at each side Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 16 to secure them. We're now going to join his other arm and we're going to do exactly the same that we did on this side. I'm just going to turn this around so that I can see what I'm doing. You're going to align this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here and then secure it in place, keeping pins out of the way of the stitch line. <laughs> and I'm going to put a bit of tape each side. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 17 and that's going to zigzag down the arm and secure it to the body. Load your thread colour for the satin stitching of his shirt into your machine. I'm using red. And then you're going to stitch round number 18 and that's going to stitch down here, down the centre here and down the edge of the shirt here. Load your thread colour for the satin stitching around his dungarees into your machine and then stitch round number 19. Load your thread colour for the collar of his shirt into your machine. I'm using red. And then stitch round number 20. Load your thread colour for the satin stitching of his belt into your machine. I'm using yellow. And then stitch round number 21. We're now going to free our work from the hoop, so turn your hoop over and carefully trim around the edge of the stitch line. 
taking care of course not to cut any stitches All that remains for us to do now is to dissolve the uh, wash away stabilizer around the edge of the stitch line. So take a cotton bud and dip it in some warm water and just run it around the edge. I do hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did, please do all the usual YouTubey things like comment, subscribe and share. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's always lots of ideas, help and inspiration there for everybody and a place to show off all your uh, Creative Kiwi makes as well, of course. And thank you very much for joining me. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below along with lots of other information such as where I get my supplies and some discount codes for you as well.